In this video, we're going to look at how we draw bending moment diagrams and write down bending moment equations, um, mainly for beams, but we will show a few examples for frames as well after we've considered beams. So first of all, let's just remind ourselves of what a bending moment is and how it differs slightly from what a moment is. So a bending moment, as drawn in this diagram here, is the action of two moments on a piece of material that then for the action of these two moments causes a deformation in the material. And I've drawn a sketch here of what that deformation would look like. And because of these two bending mo these two moments acting, we have a deformation where we're getting a shortening on the top, which we call compression, and a lengthening of the beam underneath which is causing tension and the big difference to remember is that a moment is just one of these actions but you need two of the so with just the one action this piece of material would simply rotate but with the two actions it causes this deformation and that's what's called a bending moment Okay, so we're going to go straight into an example, and like we've done with shear forces and before that with trusses, we use the method of sections to determine the bending moments as we go along a beam. As we did with the truss examples with method of sections, or most of them, and with the shear force examples, the first thing that we need to do is to calculate what the reaction forces are. So... So we consider the rigid body equilibrium. Let's first of all draw our free body diagram. So I have the beam. We have the point load W. We have a reaction RAY. A reaction RAX. But I know that's going to be zero because there are no other horizontal forces on there. And finally I have on the right hand side a reaction RBY. And I'll write down my equation of equilibrium. I'm going to look at equilibrium in the y direction. So sum of the forces in the y direction. I have pointing upwards. RAY. Plus RBY. And pointing downwards. So minus W. Big W. Pointing downwards. And for equilibrium. That must all be equal to zero. And... I'm going to exploit the fact that this beam is symmetric both in geometry and loading. And I can therefore go on to write that RAY must be equal to RBY, which equals W upon 2. And that will be pointing upwards. You could also, of course, maybe take moments about A or moments about B and establish that indeed RAY and RBY are identical to another. So as we did with shear forces, we need to consider different sections of the beam at a time. And the rule is the same. So wherever we have changes in the loading, and so at A we begin loading because we have RAY applied. We have a loading at the halfway point, L upon two. So therefore, we will expect a change in the bending moment and the shear force after this point. And again, at the end of the section where the force is applied, RBY. So we have two sections to consider. And so let's have a look at the, the first section starting here at this left hand side from A onwards. So method of sections and let's draw our free body diagram for the section we're considering so we have the nice neat end at a and we have a portion of the beam and i make a cut in that beam where i wish to know the bending moment so I have the reaction RAY, which is equal to W upon 2. And at the cut, I could still have my shear force pointing downwards. But 
for bending moments, I only really need to know what moment would be need to be caused at this cutting point. And let's call this MX. So the moment at X that would keep this beam in equilibrium. And let's put our coordinate X and we're taking that all the way from A going all the way to where we make the cut. And I think it's important to emphasize the rest of the beam would be there and we'd probably have a point in the center of the beam where the load finally gets applied but we're making a cut before we hit that point so and now we take moments and it's important that we actually take moments from the point that is x along the beam and so let's take moments about point x so we have an M of X, and that's going anti-clockwise, we're presuming that to be positive, and going in the anti-clockwise direction, so let's call that negative, we have the reaction W upon 2, multiplied the, le the lever arm from the point we're considering, so that lever arm is X, equals to 0 to be in equilibrium, and we can rearrange that. But Mx at a point x somewhere along this beam is equal to Wx upon 2. And this expression, again, like we did with show of forces, we have to state where this expression is applicable so it goes from naught meters along the beam at point a to point l upon two where the point load is applied and numerically this bending moment has came out as positive and so if we consider that our beam would be deformed in such a shape and this was a section at this point You can see that our beam will have taken on the deformed shape that we showed at the top with compression at the top and tension at the bottom. And so if we choose that this clockwise on the left, anti-clockwise on the right to be a positive bending moment, then we'll call the moment on this left hand side to be a positive bending moment but we'll come on to that when we draw the bending moment diagram so going back to the drawing of the original example we also need to consider between x equals l upon 2 from the center all the way to x equals l so point b and again let's draw the free body diagram for this second section so i have a portion of a beam and I've where I've made a cut I have the point load W and that point load W is at L upon 2 from the left hand side we have the reaction at A which was W upon 2 let's call that A and again we haven't quite reached the end of the beam B because we've made a cut before we get to that point. Okay, and our coordinate axes, x is the distance from the end of the beam to where we made the cut. And again, we assume a positive moment, m of x needing to be applied on the right hand side of this cut. And so we can write down our equilibrium statement so taking moments about x so we have w upon 2 which is this reaction here multiplied by x and this we're going to call negative because it's going clockwise we also have w so this is the load in the center and this distance here between where we're taking moments and x 
and where the load is is a the lever arm is x minus l upon 2 and this is going anti-clockwise so we're choosing to call that positive and we also have the moment applied at the cut which is m of x and again this is going anti-clockwise so we're choosing to call this positive and for equilibrium this must be all equal to zero and so we're going to rearrange all of this in terms of m of x and so we get that m at point x is equal to after expanding the brackets w l upon 2 minus w x upon 2 so we have our two bending moment equation specified again just to complete this you should state where this equation is applicable so that is applicable between l upon 2 and l and now we we can take these two statements. We have a constant minus wx upon 2. So something minus something times x. So if we were to draw these two. So we have a constant times x. And then a constant minus something times x. So let's draw those two things just remembering what we know from maths, y equals mx plus c. So if we were to draw it, we had something with a positive gradient. And then we had something that started at some point with a negative gradient coming down to zero. Okay, now I'm going to complicate things slightly. This would normally be the bending moment diagram. And in many textbooks you read, that is what they would draw as the bending moment diagram. However, as I did for shear force diagrams, I find it useful to draw the original setup and take some horizontal lines down the page. Well, it's not quite in the center, so I'll move that. It probably isn't over. Draw some straight line, straight. Some straight lines down the page where you expect these changes in the moment diagram. Let's do this one nice and neat as well. So, oh, nice and neat this time, baby. Straight line tool didn't work. Okay, so let's move on. And so we'll draw ourselves a horizontal horizontal axes and this axis is the x distance going along the beam now we've decided that this is what the shape of our bending moment diagram should look like but we're going to make a decision on this course that we would like to draw our bending moments on the tension side of the beam so our beam let's draw a different color we would expect to bend like this and therefore the bottom face of that beam would be in tension the top face of that beam would be in compression and many structural engineers choose this way of saying this is the tension side of the beam and say for instance you're doing something with reinforced concrete this is where you would need to put reinforcing bars on this tension side of the beam. So we're choosing on this course to draw our bending moment diagrams to be on the tension side of the beam. But even though the numerical result was positive, we like to draw them this way round in structural engineering so if this causes some confusion what we could do is draw the axis pointing downwards 
put the units kilo newton meters on there and say that our positive axis is pointing downwards and again draw the little symbol to show what you consider to be positive for this scenario we've considered we can also find a very important result that structural engineers use all the time especially when doing quick calculations and that is where is the back maximum bending moment and we can see from the diagram that we've drawn that bending maximum bending moment occurs here which is at L upon 2 that's quite intuitive why that is and so what we're going to do is take this value of L upon 2 and substitute it into one of our bending moment equations and we're going to take the first one which because it's simpler there's only one term in there and substitute what the value is when x equals L upon 2 so The maximum moment so m of x from the left hand side was equal to w x upon 2 and we're going to evaluate this at x equals l upon 2 so that gets us that m max equals w upon 2 multiplied by x equals L upon 2 and therefore the maximum moment for a point load right in the center of a simply supported beam is WL upon 4 and this is an important result that I've remembered off the top of my head ever since I was taught it too many years ago okay so this is a really important result, probably worth do, do, do. writing down that the bending moment is the maximum bending moment is WL upon 4 and the shape of the bending moment diagram we, when we had point loads was linear and we'll come on to see what happens when we apply a UDL So one final thing to consider is if we go back in the notes to the shear forces section and again I'm going to draw the original setup with the loads upon there so these were W upon 2's and this was W, W upon 2, W upon 2, actually a little bit bigger show but it's a capital okay and we get draw some lines down the page and now what we do is remind ourselves oh that's quite good first of all Let's draw that bending moment diagram, taking positive to be on the tension side of the beam. So this is the moment diagram, M. And now we're also going to draw the shear force diagram. different color for shear force and so we had a constant shear force along the left hand side of the beam we dropped down by W and got to the right hand side of the beam and jumped up by a value of W upon 2 so this is W upon 2 this jump in the middle is W and the jump back up is W upon 2 i.e. the reaction forces and we can look at these two diagrams together and let's make sure we've got the free body diagram on the same page 
And there's a relationship between the moments and the shear forces. We'll go into this in more detail later. And the big thing that you see is when the shear force is going through zero. So here at this point, the bending moment is a maximum. So bending moment is going to be a minimum or a maximum. Careful, you can also have the min minimal condition as well. When the shear force is equal to zero. 